Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to this brief message today. This is the fourth in a series of four short messages entitled Life Beyond Lockdown. In the first week of March, we looked at social distancing. In the second week, we looked at wearing masks. And last week, we looked at following rules and regulations. Well, today I want us to think about the topic of hand washing, of washing our hands. It's something that we've all had to do uh, multiple times since the COVID-19 lockdown. Of course, it's something that's a normal part of life, but it's become so much more prominent as something that we focus on uh, during this lockdown. We've all had to get used to washing our hands for at least 20 seconds and posters in every workplace and cafe and restaurant about how to go about washing your hands, something that we all thought was pretty simple until COVID-19 came along. Well, you know, sometimes we will say uh, in the English language, won't we, I'm washing my hands of this. I'm washing my hands of this. I don't want to be associated with this anymore. And it comes from the idea of washing our hands as a symbol of innocence, of innocence, of being clean and cleansed from something. And in fact, we find this language originates in the Bible, originates in the Bible. And I want to read to you um, a couple of verses from the book of Psalms and Psalm 24. And here the question is being posed, who is worthy to worship God? Who is worthy to come before a holy God and worship him? It says this, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Well, that is such a high standard. That is an incredibly high standard to ask of people before they can be worthy to go and worship God. And in fact, the Bible tells us that none of us can meet that standard, that none of us in God's sight have clean hands and a pure heart. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 64, uh, and verse 6, it says this, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. All our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Even the best things that you and I can do and say and think all fall far short of the perfect spotless standard that God demands. And this falling short is what the Bible calls sin, of course. This is what separates us from God. The question is then, how can we be cleansed? How can we be cleansed? If we can't cleanse ourselves, how can it be brought about? Well, just one more um, part of the Bible I want to turn you to in Matthew's Gospel and chapter 27. Matthew's Gospel and chapter 27. And here we uh, come into contact with the man who is probably most well known in the Bible for washing his hands. And that's the man called Pilate, Pontius Pilate. Perhaps you've heard of him, perhaps not. He was the governor uh, of the region that Jesus lived in at the time of the life of Jesus and his death. And he was involved in sending the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross, even though Pontius Pilate had not found any guilt in Jesus Christ. Let's read from verse 22. Matthew 27 and verse 22. Pilate said to them, and this is to the crowd that are standing around, then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And in the moments that follow, the Lord Jesus would be sent to the cross and there he would die a humiliating and excruciating death. Why? To pay the price for your uncleanness and for mine. He poses a question to the crowd and it's a question I want to pose to you and I pose to myself as well as somebody who loves Jesus Christ. And it's this, then what shall I do? with Jesus, who is called Christ? Do you know, all of us have to face up to that question. And it is, in fact, the most vital question that a person can be asked, because your answer to it will determine your eternal destiny, whether in heaven or in hell. 
What will you do with Jesus who is called Christ? Will you reject him like the crowd here? Will you reject his offer of salvation or will you accept him as your Lord and your Saviour? He would go to the cross to pay the price for your sin and for mine, to make us clean. There is no way that you and I could be clean in and of ourselves. Even our most righteous deeds, Isaiah tells us, are just like filthy rags in the sight of God because we fall so far short of his standard. And yet loving us so much, God sent his one and only begotten son into this world to live amongst us and eventually to go to the cross and there to die to pay that price for your uncleanness and for mine. He died. He died. But three days later, he rose again miraculously from the dead. As he had promised he would do, he rose again. That's what we'll be remembering uh, in a short time uh, when it comes to Easter, the glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. And that means that he's a living saviour. That means that he's alive today and he still wants to have a relationship with men and women and boys and girls to make people clean. I wonder what your response to that question will be. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with him? You know, you can't wash your hands of him. Pilate sought to do that, but it was futile. You can't wash your hands of the Lord Jesus. You can't sit on the fence about him. You need to either accept that he is the saviour of the world and take him as your Lord and saviour or say no to him and reject him. But you know, there's only one way to cleanness. There's only one way to be made clean and that's through him and through the blood that he shed on the cross to pay the price for our uncleanness. In the book of 1 John, in chapter 1 and verse 7, it says this, The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let me read that again. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Will you be cleansed today? It's one thing to wash your hands and protect yourself from COVID-19. But what about the judgment of God that's coming on each one of us? We need to be protected from that too. And there's only one way to ensure that protection. And that's to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour in your own life. To pay the price for your own sin. And to be cleansed by his blood from all your sin. Forgiven totally, completely and finally. Thank you so much for listening uh, to these messages. And I hope that you will think about what your response will be to Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening.